And of course the first part of the install will be to make sure you have all the components that they have listed on here because you probably don't want to take your take the, the mill apart or the, this portion of the mill apart and then find out you're missing some key component and then of course having to put it back together uh, until you get the components. So. And of course the next step would be to make sure that the machine is power offed. Okay, so I guess if you have a newer model of the 770, all you have to do is this number one step right here, and then skip all this other stuff on this page is what it's looking like, and then go on to the um, mechanical assembly. If you have an older model, you have to do all this stuff here. Good thing I read that one section, otherwise I've been trying to figure out how to do all this stuff. So... I'm going to start with this, which is basically just taking um, the draw bar, the belt, this section right here, and that right here, all the parts pertaining to the, the manual tightening and loosening of the uh, draw bar, basically. And uh, I believe it says something here about it might make certain steps easier if you remove the spindle cover. Um, oh, the following steps. Oh, so I don't have, to, I may not have to remove the cover because I'm not going to do the following steps. I don't know. All right, well, I'll look into that and see how it goes. Uh, I'll do the step here first. Uh, basically, just referring to this bracket right here. So I'm going to remove this bracket, uh, the belt, of course, and all these parts over here, so I'll do that. Uh, before doing this, you might want to move this table and the y-axis back that way because it makes it a little easier to uh, reach the head to work on this. I had to turn it back on, uh, move it back, and then turn it back off. Um, also, getting this bolt out back here was a little tricky. I basically put the uh, Allen key like this and the vice grips on it like that to, to break it loose. Okay, I've removed that hardware and put it aside. Um, I believe these components will no longer be used. Uh, and I'm saving these right here. This, of course, came out of the bottom when you took the power draw bar out. And I have uh, clean inspected these. You're not supposed to have any burrs or anything on here, and they're supposed to be clean. Uh, I think the next step will be to uh, mount the the standoffs, I believe, and these plates right here, mounting plates and latch plates and stuff. So I'll go ahead and get those installed. Okay, I got these plates mounted, and the next step is to, or that was with the 6 millimeter, uh metric Allen, and the next step would be to uh, mount these two pieces right here. Okay, I installed the two latch plates uh, with the four screws. Actually, they require uh, lock nuts. I didn't put those on at first. Uh, went back and uh, took those out and uh, put those in. I um, also installed these uh, set screw with jam nuts. These are just little Allen set screw deals. So I installed those there and you're supposed to adjust it so that the the bottom of the screw is flush with the bottom of this part right here and the next step is to uh, install this eccentric uh, thingamabob here um, uh, with this um, bolt and a lock washer that goes uh, right there and I guess you're supposed to apply uh, some multi-purpose grease around here, so... Okay, well the instructions say to put some multi-purpose grease on these washers, but I recently saw the uh, power draw bar for the uh, Tormach 440 where they actually showed putting uh, anti-seize uh, along this surface, along the lips, like this, on the back surface, and continuing on like that, so I think I'm going to do that with this here. I have some uh, anti-seize here from, uh, I think it was from, from the space mill or something like that, or it was the Superfly, I forget, but 
Uh, so I'm going to go ahead and do that just around here and like on the lip around here. Right. Okay, I've installed the power draw bar uh, with the collet down below, of course. Put the collet in first, uh, slid this down in. Uh, what you can see what it looks like up close there. And now I'm supposed to tighten this down. Uh, two wrenches, of course, here and here. Um, to a specific, uh, let me see what it says, two full turns past, past hand tight. Okay, I hand tightened this and then I turned it two full turns, that's what's referred to as uh, preloading. And after the installation is done then it will be uh, adjusted to the uh, proper tightness. All right. Okay, so the next step will be to uh, mount the cylinder. And I guess um, this hole right here Uh, mounts over this eccentric part right here and then it swings in. So I guess this goes on like this and then it just swings in like that and then supposed to install the quick release in here to hold it in there. You got there's a little button on the top of the quick release pin, so you gotta push this little button right here. Kind of fiddle with it so it lines up. Okay, so the gap between this plate and this big washer. Uh, it's supposed to be between a sixteenth to three sixteenths. It looks like we probably have about a sixteenth, so I think we're good there. And the distance between uh, the bottom of this bolt, basically the gap between these two, is supposed to be no more than eighth. So, I don't know, it looks like I have close to three eighths there. So it looks like I'm going to have to add some washers there. Uh, I guess they supply extra washers to uh, to be able to push this down, so the gap is proper. Okay, I added uh, three washers here, and I got the gap to, it looks like it's a little under an eighth. It's supposed to be under an eighth, between an eighth and the sixteenth. Alright, so the next process is to align the cylinder, uh, the center of the cylinder, with the center of the draw bar, which I guess is the purpose of this eccentric uh, thing here. So, okay, so the first step is to align it in the x axis. You can kind of tell by eyeballing it there that they're not really in alignment. Uh, these two, the washers and those washers, you see how it's kind of that way a little bit. So, to adjust it in the x-axis, which is this way, uh, you adjust uh, this one right here. So I'm going to adjust that until they line up, and then I guess I'm supposed to tighten that down. Okay, so to adjust it in the y-axis, you simply just have to pivot the unit like this till it lines up. But in order to do that, you actually have to make sure that this screw right here is loose. The Y hold down screw, um, mine was tight, so it wasn't adjusting. So I actually had this out. I think you have to have this out in too, because that's what's going to keep this, the assembly from moving. So, uh, so I put this in, uh, loosen this up. Now I can uh, adjust the position of this to make sure that this is lined up. So, and then the next and the thing to do would be to uh, tighten that screw back down. Okay, I got all that alignment done. Uh, I did notice that when I uh, go to tilt it out, that I seem to be uh, hitting right here a little bit. I mean, I could still get it out, but. Um, I suppose if I pick up on it a little bit, 
I can get it passed. So and I'll have to double check the adjustment and see if there's anything I can do about that. Or uh or just shave a little bit off here, I don't know. I notice these don't have uh plugs in them also. Um maybe they supply plugs with it? I'll have to see. Okay, with the cylinder in cylinder installation out of the way, it's time to move on to the uh the electrical and the uh, the pneumatic portion of it. Okay.